okay okay um first of all i'm very jealous of people who are growing up now in india if you are a kid now find all these problems that are india centric and try to solve them you immediately have a market of 130 crores 140 crores people and that's a market that nobody has access to zuckerberg is not a good example the reason is if you go and look at his interviews in 2005 he kept he kept nudging the fact that i was lucky you are investing a lot but out, output is still not there but at some point when the output starts coming out of that effort it becomes exponentially higher the 10000 exactly 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 welcome to story to hear where we share unique stories of indian immigrants who have made it to the us i'm avishek your host where we share their experiences struggles and trials with you if you are looking for guidance and want to get inspired by fellow indians who had similar background and struggles growing up this is the place for you so um, so i think yeah so it um, i'm starting this so it's um, you know again we are all running i did uh, one or two of these um of these interviews in the last couple of days so mm. again i am learning um, all of us are learning i am not that great at camera but uh, mm. i i feel that there is this uh, important uh, should i say con- contribution that all of us can make whether i am doing it or you are talking about it because a lot of the stories are not are untold so mm. again your story will also evolve Uh, but ask at this point of time what is the story is very important so um also let's let's get started so um first off let's clear off uh, you are where are you now and uh, where did you start your life like where were you born where are you now so just uh, yeah yeah data yeah. point perspective so, so my uh, parents have distinct backgrounds like um, my bab- my father is from agartala my mother is from kolkata i was born in kolkata as the that was the you know uh norm nanihal mamarwadi so uh, i i was born there and uh, in kolkata but i am a agartalite by my soul my blood everything is agartala yeah. um so from 1983 to 2001 one single school holy cross and that's how i know you and um, yeah it was a it was an interesting decision because everybody in my family is uh coming from a business background and uh, they were um, not bothered about having degrees they were not bothered about they just wanted me to have a, you know a childhood just like others so any school that is close by i can walk and go go down there were a lot of options like netaji school or things like that but my mother uh, kind of insisted that okay let's try to put her put him into an, um, you know an icc school so that's how I, that's how i came into hcs uh, holy cross was uh, a revelation because back in 1989 no other school had computers forget it <laughs> schools no government office had computers no universities uh, in, pretty much almost all universities in northeast did not have computers uh, very few maybe in guwahati uh, had computers at the 1989 phase so uh, but holy cross uh, you know the principals got the computers in so today i understand the magnanimity of that situation that a school in a highly disconnected part of india there was no broad gauge train um, even narrow gauge train stations were not there close to agartala so uh, and the national highway 44 to assam was severely disrupted throughout the year there were floods flash floods and landslides uh, even i faced a landslide once uh, somewhere in mizoram while going to guwahati so we were highly disconnected and not only that um, flights at one point in time were affordable but uh, then the prices went up and it was very difficult to go to kolkata so for us we used to meet our grandparents uh, once in like what uh, four years uh, so so missed out a big part of my childhood due to this disconnective disconnection uh, lack of connectivity with uh, kolkata during our childhood so not only kolkata like mainland india so it was a it was a big ordeal you have to go to guwahati it's a one day thing then stay there if you get a another connecting train you um, you know the trains to bangalore was like three days <laughs> journey so 
so some some of my friends who came to study they they literally had uh you know a lot of trouble going back home because it's a four day journey so up back and forth eight days are gone traveling hard it's not even a very comfortable journey you know food um, cleaning wise safety and hygiene wise so yeah uh, agartala i think was uh, a very unique place but holy cross was a oasis in that disconnection because uh, holy cross had a unique um, environment where teachers are from um, army backgrounds who come from different parts of india the diocese that is the the uh, the the uh, the christian nature of the school means a lot of teachers from kerala came in uh, the principals um, uh, the fathers basically were um, they they have this you know rotation job they go all across the world so we had uh-huh. principals we had fathers vice vice principals who uh, had uh, european you know a, a certain part of Explosion. of their life they spent in some dioceses some uh, some churches and uh, in us and then they studied they so they they brought in a lot of those insights a lot of our principals they uh, they talked as if it's an uh, the the school is a is a system of holistic upbringing so holy cross was very different it was not about no none of the principals were going to force you to oh i want my students to become the first second third in the state no <laughs> those are not the goals the goal was here is a bunch of 50 kids 60 kids in this class in the end they should be you know they should be strong mentally and uh, and holy cross was uh, blessed with so many grounds and you play your thing you want to play kabaddi you want to play hide and seek you want to play catch uh, <coughs> tag or you want to play cricket football it's up to you such a big school none of the kids felt that they oh i don't have space i need to you know <laughs> i i can't play football football cricket are happening in the same ground so it was a uh, it was a unique experience i will say after that i uh, of course um, so I, I, want to, I, I want to yeah. I want to I want to sort of double click on your so you you talked to me you were you know born, uh, born sort of raised in a very small place in in in, in Tripu, Agartala Tripura so uh, school had a very big impact because as you said uh, a lot of these teachers were bringing in ideas from Europe or US uh, so you never felt that and also your initial exposure with computer was also very important. Um, but other than that, um, as you were growing in your family, as you said, you, you, your parents come from a business background. What was your aspiration? So as a young kid, uh, was there ever an aspiration that you said, okay, I, I, that is what I would, that would be my goal, um, career wise or you place you want to be, uh, was yeah, there anything yeah. like that? Um, uh, so a little bit of a background, I have a, my, my my father was a very interesting man he's no longer there um the reason i'll tell you why he's interesting is this is a, just a small anecdote um he used to drive to mbb college in a car <laughs> in 1971 and uh, whereas like in those days most of his friends couldn't afford a bicycle so he he was very lavish very outgoing everybody loved him just to give you an example, when the first Levi store in India opened in uh, Delhi, in Chandni Chowk, he took his bunch of his friends, drove all the way till Delhi from Agartala in a jeep to buy uh, Levi's jeans. So he never pushed me for studies because for him, it was it was inconsequential. Because for him, it was knowledge. You you should like he used to look at me and say at the end of your school life you should be able to I should I I will tell you boss for a straight or black sea you should be able to close your mind uh, close your eyes and f- you know place yourself in the map that okay if I were to go from so, uh, this place to this place this would be my countries that I will travel or this you know this is what uh, the this thing will be at the end of your school you should be able to. Uh, do basic math so surprisingly that was his attitude and he never looked at what you know what I was studying or you know neither did my mother so uh, it was kind of interesting because all my friends were 
always busy their parents were continuously asking each other hey where is your kid <laughs> although it was holy cross so that was far less than other schools but in uh, even then by that standard i was my parents were the least interfering in my you know in from the education point of view so uh, but my father was very athletic so he was a he was a tripura state uh, gold medalist in boxing in 1972 1973 so he was um, he as soon as I woke up, the first thing he used to say was, this is this, uh, you know, moong beans um, and uh, jaggery that you eat, right? Uh, Gurchana. So uh, the sprouts and uh, this thing, jaggery, this is uh, some, and he used to always have a bunch of uh, herbal things in water placed overnight, like trifola, uh, fenugreek seeds and uh, brahmi and things like that. A morning you wake up and have those plain empty stomach. Then go for a jog because I was asthmatic. I couldn't run much. So he realized it very early. But asthmatic people in uh, US, uh, I have talked after having been in the US for so long. I have noticed one thing is the asthma is not considered a problem here. They have overcome it. There are many, many Olympians who have overcome asthma. Like I think Florence Griffith Joyner, who was the 1980s uh, Olympics uh, gold medalist from US, she was asthmatic. And uh, she... And, Imagine she going ahead and, you know, being Don't top be. of the top uh, sprinters in the world. Uh, so my father, of course, didn't was not that scientifically aware that these things could be done or we did not have exposure to those scientific methods. Nowadays, dietitians and your fitness, in, you know, instructors have a different scale of education and they study biology very, very closely. But my father said that, OK, if you can't do a lot of things in uh, sports because being fit is a very big treasure like you might be unlucky in where you are grown uh, where, where where you like the environment you are you know growing up or the country you are going up or the society you are going up or the culture but fitness is something that will throughout your life enable you let's say at 45 you suddenly decide to do a business if you if your no, body is not going to give it give support you are gone your family could be giving support. You could be having financial, this thing, but your body is not giving you support. So you never know where your opportunity will come, where we will meet like Steve Ballmer met Bill Gates, right? You might meet your Bill Gates or you might be, meet your Steve Ballmer at, at the age of uh, 50. Will you be fit at that point in time? So fitness was his goal. And I did not have aspirations from uh, like technical aspirations at that point in time. There were very few um like um, top notch today kids have apj abdul kalam's photo on their you know in their rooms along with virat, virat kohli they have elon musk's picture on their you know this thing in those days we only had cricketers to look up to and uh, um, even politicians there were hardly few today you have eloquent politicians right people look at jay shankar subramaniam jay shankar india's external affairs minister and want to think that okay i can also join politics if i have i can become like him so things have changed now in our childhood there was uh, hardly anybody who motivated uh, me that much you could look up to tendulkar but you know you cannot be a tendulkar even tendulkar cannot produce another tendulkar it's not possible like it's it's very very it's it's near to impossible to do that so i did not have aspirations uh, truly speaking i was uh, I, I liked a lot of personalities our school had like father david um, uh, you know that's a personality i wanted to be highly fit highly energetic he enters a room and everybody is like absorbing his energy and as if his energy is increasing out of it there is one more person who i felt um, has the same energy that's the film star it's shahrukh khan who enters a room and his energy somehow it doesn't go down it just keeps going up and others also get the energy so those were the kind of aspirational so, things for me okay. uh, yeah yeah so i think so Again, so as you said, there's a big impact from school as you went to a Catholic school, you know, people mm -hmm. bringing in outside experiences. Your father always pushed you to become more, you know, be in sport, more athletic. Well, you could not do it, but that's always, always behind your back. And they never pushed you to become the topper in your class or anything like that. Uh, but you ended up well in your life. But I mean... A lot of times when we look at look back um, at, our, at at parents now, and even in the past, as you have seen, um, you know these things don't always translate. I mean, uh, you cannot predict what you cannot predict. Uh, it doesn't matter that if you are like the topper in the class, doesn't mean that you'll end up at the right place in the future. So it's 
all very unpredictable. So I think that's great. So I, I know you, you made your journey in Agartala. You, you came out of it. I wanted to ask you about like things that as you were growing that you felt um, that you were lacking. Everyone, all, all of us, as even now at, at our age, we feel that um, I'm not perfect. Like, so, you know, oh, this guy has this skill. Uh, he's good at athletic or he is looking, he looks very handsome or every, every age we have these things. So how did you process your, let's say your shortcomings as you were growing? And did yeah, you, yeah. Ha did you ever feel that, uh, that you had shortcomings um, and how did you process those? Okay. Okay. So, uh, I think, um, the most interesting phase of uh, my this processing that you said came when I went to a job first job, but not during my uh, school and college days much, um, uh, much because um, I continuously felt that okay, I might be uh, weak at this thing. For example, Aishman in our class was so good at football, like he could place himself in the field exactly at the right spot. So some, some some calculation must be going on in his mind that is different than, you know, uh, mine. So I was not able to j judge the game while running just, you know, like a mad person. And even he's he has done very well in life, um, um, given that he had some challenges, uh, you know, um, from an initial days point of view. I don't know whether we should put this in this. Uh, it's uh, He's also a Holy Cross guy. You should have a different meeting with him. But he was kind of, uh, I used to see him on the field and I always felt a uh, that I am lesser. This is a person who could catch a ball doing a somersault. Mane, it was it was surreal the way he used to be on the field and uh, uh, that that th that's one thing. another guy or not the, so i used to like their sporting abilities and mainly because my father was so sporty i always felt that i'm not you know reaching the standards of my father mm. uh, he was um, uh, he was extremely good looking and uh, he used to do 500 squats 500 this thing and <laughs> i would tire out at 50 being a young uh, guy and my um, my father's sisters would say you know your father used to do this and like I, I, I that was kind of a internal uh, uh this thing uh struggle that i had in terms of shortcomings uh on the other hand other good things happening in my life like easily scoring uh, marks without putting in too much effort um, watching cricket on the exam day and still being able to score so that kept me going uh, essentially because i felt okay uh, no life can be perfect and if 51 days out of 100 are happy and 49 days are not happy, you are still happy, <laughs> happier. <laughs> so yeah. that mm -hmm. was a that was a very uh, uh, thank thankfully I got it early. Uh, I know of a few friends who felt that they are not good at anything, and um, I somehow got eerily attracted to somebody with that kind of feeling and um, you know uh, try to uplift them uh, because I personally had one good thing going not many but uh, others had nothing going at home they were not getting support at uh, you know the girl they like is not responding the score the, the in sports they are not getting picked up in education that not they are not going anywhere uh, i had a close friend he used to come to my house and he he actually every time i taught him anything i remember first time i taught him logarithms it he couldn't understand and after after a week i was getting frustrated he used to come to my place uh, in the evenings in the daytime uh, hey pragga amu tor barite please uh, eight time amu so and randomly he used to come um, uh, and after seven days when he could understand a little bit of it he was like how did you understand it you know so fast you are gifted or <clears throat> you you know this is unfair <laughs> his uh, bottom mm -hmm. line was this is unfair basically that somebody is naturally understanding this so th that kind of made me mentally uh, I felt sad, but I also felt this mental confidence that, okay, so I might have some things which are unique and I, uh, this might be my calling. And uh, um, even though my father sent me to this, uh, you know, there was this sports authority of India in Agartala, right, uh, where they have cricket academy. So he bought me a bat, he sent me there. After three days, I said, I can't. <laughs> so... Um, 
and so I mentally I think, reconciled. I mean, yeah. what you're saying is that though you did not have a few skill set, though which you all like, so you felt uh, looked at others who are good at soccer or cricket. You felt that that is something you want to, but you did not have it. But you had other things which you realized pretty early. Like for example, you said mm. you were able to figure out that you were able to understand academic stuff much faster than others, which gave you a little bit of confidence. So which essentially, you know, as you said, balanced out, mm-hmm. um, correct, correct. balanced out your uh, uh, hollowness, I would say. And as you said, yeah. that there are mm-hmm. people um, who at that age may not, maybe, you know, basic in everything. Like I know mm-hmm. a little bit mm-hmm. of sport, a little bit of, uh, you know, you know, academics. Yeah. I'm, uh, mm-hmm. I'm okay, okay mm-hmm. looking at, as I'm saying, as, as a young guy, mm-hmm. you're trying also to, go out and have a girlfriend or mm-hmm. you know make friends and be popular and all of that so many people have all of like small small but they don't then they do not feel confident in anything they're like okay i i'm like an average guy um <laughs> so i mean so these these struggles are normal i think what what we are also trying to talk through this is like you have made all the way here and you have achieved so many things in life but you also went through these when you questioned yourself what am I doing? There are guys who are like, you know, X, Y, Z. And yeah, I mean, that's. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, uh, and uh, very interestingly, uh, I, I'll tell you why, why job changed everything. In school, I was like, one can be good at everything and one should try for that. So I kept trying. Uh, I know in football, I, I figured out a strategy. There is no referee. So I used to be offside and wait for the ball and then <laughs> shoot the goal. So at least get some personal satisfaction. Oh, I was out of the three goals my team scored, I was having one goal, right? So uh, that was cool because I I kept thinking you can hack your way out of life and then, you know, you can be good at everything. Um, And uh, uh, even in school as well, um, you know, I had uh, kind of not super popular, but yeah, people knew me and I was school principal, a school president, uh, that is SPL, school people's leader. Um, I was uh, captain of the Red uh, Red House. So all of those things uh, made, uh, uh, I, I I kind of sailed through school. Uh, college was a big revelation. Anna University, everybody is a school topper. So you are not, a, <laughs> you are not any different. There the difference was everybody understands everything in class. But the difference is this guy, He's a he's in the Tamil Nadu basketball team, <laughs> national mm. team, uh, the, plays national. There is this guy. He he does this jamming, right? Keyboard uh, and uh, this thing, guitar jamming, and um, like in those days, Ilai Raja was very very you know, famous, and um, he was uh, almost compared better than A R Rahman. And there was one guy who used to play Ilai Raja music like Ilai Raja, and um, people used to flock to his room in hostel, ke, you know, play this, play that. And there was one guy who used to do um, animation. So all our college uh, functions would start with his animation that he built and he had this computer. So college was a big, big revelation because you were no longer having that edge. <laughs> the mm-hmm. only good thing, the only good thing in your life <laughs> is no longer, you know, good enough. And uh, they, and then there were kids in college whose brothers were like uh, in exemplary position. Somebody was a NASA uh, director and her, his sister was so good in class. Uh, and one day I was invited to her house and um, we were having lunch. Her brother called, I think, from uh, by in, in the evening time, early morning, East Coast. Uh, and, um, his brother called from Houston. And imagine for one hour he was guiding her what to do, what not. And, and I, I noticed that. I, I, I visibly could see that from next month she was behaving differently or something like that. Like I could know that whatever, whenever her brother calls and gives her guidance. So, and I was missing that and there was just no guide there. And then there were some families where I, one of my best friends, he had seven mamas, all of them had masters in US and did startups and things like that. Imagine the kind of inputs he gets in a, in a very boring task, like having a dinner. You go to go out to eat, you only talk about the quality of biryani, let's say, or where else you can get better biryani. He, when he goes out to eat with his mamas, is becoming a better person, is getting a $100,000 ex- education for mm. free. 
that to the mama is treating him to the food right so right. <laughs> imagine imagine being from those kind of families and if we go and see right whether sam brank friedman from ftx is both his, mm-hmm. and that uh, this thing right his both his parents were in uh, significant yeah, positions sorry. mark zuckerberg then uh, you know uh, the google guys their parents were even satya nadella his father was the chief secretary to pv narsimha right. rao's uh, this thing right, right. cabinet when demon when uh, sorry india's liberalization happened satya's father was the secretary of finance i think who essentially worked with manmohan singh to open up india's economy right. so satya is no you right. know he's coming from a background his background. sister his brother in law all senior is officers he comes from a background with administrative skills built in so my my college told me that these are going to be my shortcomings i will now have to re right. get a rebirth and go through this process <laughs> of right. learning from these people right. and maybe by my 40s and mid 40s i might be able to I you know do. so mm. so uh, again going back so you you came from a very small city uh, you had mm. your own challenges but you were good at studies so you made it to mm. a college mm. and you came here you saw these guys now you are competing with the best of the best but also mm. the fact that they have additional edge in the life because they have some cheat code that you don't have or you did not get from your parents or let's say from a school mm-hmm. um because it's you know it's like an undue advantage sort of a leverage that they had that you did not have so um and you, you talked about a couple of these people who are in big position that we see even in the us um they are they are uh, you know as you said they are previous generations were here their relatives are in big positions and they are able to shortcut a lot of these things around what are the cheat codes to life right so yeah, yeah. Uh, i i wanted to get into that but before that so let's talk about so we talked about all of that now let's talk about how you had all these so you had your own shortcomings in school you came out and you now start seeing other shortcomings okay not that i'm not have have to be a good good guy but also these guys that i'm competing with knows things that i may take 10 years for me to even know how all of this works so talk about your uh, job experience and then how did you progress and how did you move to the us and we'll talk about that yeah yeah so um how small um conversations can change somebody's life i i don't believe in this i did not believe much in these things so this happened during my college final year when the placements were happening so uh, somehow i knew i'm not i I'm, i'm not uh, going to crack microsoft at that point in time i was not that prepared uh, because the guys who were going to crack it were uh, and microsoft i think gave a minimum gpa requirement that you need this much to be even sitting in the interview and i missed it by i i think i i, I knew that i'm not going to crack be there 8.95 i had and 9 was the gpa requirement out of 10 for you to cgpa requirement for you to even sit for the interview so then i started thinking okay if not microsoft then then where and then when ibm came for the placements uh, even though there were so many other options infosys mindtree accenture um, in those days hp um, goldman sachs and uh, a lot of companies came i was little bit focused on ibm and when the interview date came i interviewed i i had a good written exam and uh, so they they sent me back to the hostel whereas everybody had seven rounds five rounds of interview they called me directly to the final uh, this thing <laughs> uh, because my written exams were very good and then there was there were two people on the other side of the table very senior white hair and they these are ibm people who have been working in ibm since the 70s so like 25 years experienced in ibm and uh, one of them say you know while interviewing they were like they realized okay this guy is what whom we want they they were going mm-hmm. to offer me but they they also i felt f- thought that i was considering microsoft to be a better option and ibm is my you know second uh, this thing i'm i'm uh, like ibm is not something i'm very very passionate about so the other person on the other side was able to realize it and very late in life when i was on his role as a interviewer 
when i met somebody who has a google offer and is interviewing in microsoft i know that uh, this person and I, i knew from somebody else that this person already has an offer in google but he's just going through the motion of you know going through interview with us and uh, the uh, person on the other side handled it in a very different way he um, he didn't he realized soon that i might not join ibm and uh, but while giving the offer he said there you can learn things from many different in many different fields it's not like today you join microsoft so you there is no other company in the world that can give you the you know in 10 years the same amount of knowledge no there are other places so and everybody has a choice at every point in time so me i realized he was telling these things because he might have gone through something similar a mental challenge and once he had a one once he had made a decision he stayed with ibm for 25 years because at 25 years ago he was in the same you know conundrum he was a good student he had a lot of options now he was like okay who should get my this thing uh my uh, my loyalty who who who, who among these is uh, is deserving of my loyalty <laughs> and then when he picked somebody and he said okay the, you could do good anywhere or everywhere on the planet choose one thing and stay focused so that was his idea and that's why i have always worked for long number of years like in synopsis i spent 7 years microsoft 11 years uh, here too i plan to at least spend 5 years so so the, the, the that person uh, it was a very mature discussion for him he i asked him what do you like about working in ibm imagine in 2004 somebody is telling you that you know what parag i love my f- family and ibm allows me to love my family more it gives me a good job i might not be you know getting the highest possible salary package but i am happy because i am technically having a challenging job that is fulfilling me and i always wanted to do that but it also provides me good enough time to spend with my family so his priorities were very very defined and i wanted yeah. to be as confident as this person because mm. at that point in time it was a crazy outreach can i do this can i do that can i do this and thank god in those days you don't did not have um, too many successful startup founders in 2004 <laughs> everybody wanted yeah. to be a, today yeah, a kid is even today a kid is even more confused a 21 year old today has simply no idea there are just so many people to look up to somebody is a very good youtube content creator um, somebody is very good at uh, this thing you know starting companies after company That's somebody is yeah. you know cra- cra- going into wharton and uh, harvard for their mba somebody MBA is so essentially yeah, yeah. so um, now a kid has so many more options so i can only say that um, it's you have to choose one thing like the person in ibm said because if you are a smart guy there will always be options for you you cannot just spend one year everywhere and uh, you know dilute yourself you yeah. need to basically build something on top of that so tendulkar was very good he was a all round cricketer right he was the only batsman who could basically perfect every shot in the book but um but even then he used to put in hard work so during the ipl day, initial days of ipl they said he used to insist that the match should be over by 10 10 15 so that he can go to sleep at 10 30 whereas everybody else was going to the after ipl party so tendulkar imagine being talented and then not focusing is such a waste whereas he was talented and then focused so i think that ibm person meant that i i forget his name who came to, so 20 years ago but if i ever get a chance to meet him i'll tell him that um, that is very important you have to choose something and stay with it and one example also i think he was telling me about i'm a bengali and he was inspired by he was a tamilian he was inspired by dr bidhan chandra roy who was west bengal's uh, chief minister in the 50s and the best chief minister ever in west bengal's history he um, he once uh, after his exams like in those days they had ssc exams after uh-huh. ssc exams they um, he had applied both for medical and for engineering and his fa- uh, bidan dr bidan chandra's father told him which one do you prefer 
you know what dr vidhachandra rai said dr vidhachandra rai said whichever letter comes first <laughs> and on the same day both his acceptance into engineering and medical came but the medical letter came in the morning and the engineering letter came in the evening and he stuck to his even though by night he could have taken decision on both he he stuck to his words and today he is known as one of the greatest physicians doctors that calcutta produced and one of the greatest chief ministers so and in any field you go in the, eventually in the end you are not expected to be a master in that field you are supposed to contribute to that field by how by your administrating powers right administrative powers let's say you are the best soldier after 15 years you are expected to contribute back to the army in terms of strat- strategy administration people management processes that can be learned irrespective of what core detailed engin- engineering field you are doing and um, so i guess that that was um, a big learning important, and uh, um, thank you for letting yeah that was very important. so just this also i i'm just going through this so let's say i'm a young guy coming out of engineering uh, i'm i'm uh, like a lot of best companies google amazon so everyone is hiring someone is giving this package that package you have startup you can go to come to the us to stuff so what you're saying is you what would be a framework that you feel now that you have gone past that what would be a framework that the uh, like a youngster now could use to make that decision because it's all looks all looks mm. exciting and mm. you don't know what you don't know right you you feel okay i may be going to us companies or big tech companies or startup everyone has their own challenge but how would you frame the problem so what will be your way if you want to think now yeah today if i was a youngster Uh, today if i was a youngster uh, i will only suggest um, so i was super lucky in my first job that everybody else in the team was 32 33 year old and i was a 21 year old and the guidance they gave me from the first 10 years of their experience like uh, let me significantly tell you this there was one person who is now here in san francisco a facebook engineer he had he had spent his first 5 years in tcs traveling the world istanbul 3 months new york you know one year uh, bay area 6 months uh, london for 3 months amsterdam for 3 months and i was so fascinated at that point in time i thought if i have to travel the world and in our childhood discovery channel came and we saw so many world destinations people traveling and traveling was our goal job was supposed to provide us the money to <laughs> travel TCS was giving that what he told me was yeah it's all hunky dory but you don't get to you know i am in istanbul doesn't mean i get to enjoy it like a holiday i have to go work and then maybe you know somehow save money rather make money somewhere and then specifically allocate time to visit a particular country and understand and enjoy that rather than being in like 10000 things and then trying to enjoy that place Um, you, that's in bengali they say this thing that people who stay close to a train station miss the train the most so and i have <laughs> seen that too many with my yeah. with my cousin sister she was in kolkata born in kolkata she never visited victoria memorial because her parents were like kabhi bhi ja sakta abhi padh lo <laughs> now study okay. so so the, so that's what she, he said so another senior engineer told me the importance of not enjoying the 20s like he was so frustrated in his 30s that he had nothing to look back to he lost his hair you know on 31st birthday he 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 realized oh my hair is gone i was expecting to earn in 10 years and then enjoy yeah and uh, in during the days when he had hair and then he had a lot of offers from you know women to yeah you know let's go for a party movie something he he de- he denied all of those and uh, so i will say to today's youngsters find mentors who have spent 10 15 years another person told me if you are ever going to have kids have them early because you know later in life it's very difficult your body doesn't permit to you you to enjoy and your kids don't have good memories so i remember like we went to lake crater right there was one father he essentially carried his kid all the way in the trek down to the lake crater it's a long trek down and it's not easy but he was fit if he was the same person who was 45 i'm sure 
he would have done it but he would have caused other damages to his body so mm, th- th- that person's name was tarun and uh, i thank tarun for that because when i was marrying early uh, i married bhavan before my sister and i had uh, you know at least kids are in my 20 and kid in my 20 so um a lot of my brothers and cousins said hey why are you doing this early but i i kind of remembered the one in uh, what i learned in uh, this thing that, that you shouldn't be at 40 say that all of us are an i want kids <laughs> right, so right. if you ever have planned to have kids have them early as early so as so, so going back to that framework so you are saying i think the part that you are saying is you need to look up to someone who who you think is your future let's say a senior engineer and and have them as mentor and let you know feed their inputs and then process yeah. your life so process then i think there's another thing that i i think i feel struck i i sort of struggle nowadays with is um, a lot of the youngsters want to have it very quickly so mm. they they want to get to that so for example as you're saying or oh, you are you are let's say you are in your mid 30s 40s or you have a life in seattle you you know post pictures on instagram and they look at you and say oh parag has made it i want it now at 21 i i want that i want to have my wife i want to showcase to the world that i am traveling and i have money and all of that so how do you balance because as you as we were growing up the social pressure was only from parents now there's a pressure from you know 360 yeah. degree peer how do you peer how do you think the yeah. kids should process now uh, the patience and uh, have it now kind of so the ability to control your emotions is very very important if the kid is forget me telling a shortcut or any uh, idea for success i i got it with time so incidentally this thursday i went to lunch with the service now engineer he wanted to basically by the end of the year have a one on one with me it's all remote work right so he wanted to all he was thinking of is how to get it quickly i could realize he was 5 years experienced he got four promotions in 5 years now i told him you now cannot imagine another four promotions in the next 6 7 8 years because another four promotions means he was the ceo of the company <laughs> um, so you that means in the beginning there can be somebody moving fast it's just like that baby who started speaking at 3 and the baby who started speaking at 7 by the 8th year both look same so you could have become a very senior guy very early but if you have not put in your years into the work um zuckerberg is not a good example the reason is if you go and look at his interviews in 2005 he kept he kept nudging the fact that i was lucky i was lucky i you know and i don't know whether facebook will be there in 2006 let's see where this journey goes so i think that is the reason why he succeeded because he knew what his limitations were that facebook can be taken over any day but just like he took over myspace or orkut he came as a force and just decimated those anybody else could come it happened right tiktok came and took business from so many different and um, if you ask me in 5 years do you think another social network will not come up who can guarantee that another social network yeah. will not come up so let's not look at zuckerberg but yeah if you have friends who are traveling there are other ways to achieve it so i have a cousin brother who always tells me you can travel if you cut down on three other things okay if you don't have a job you don't have um, you know any talent then it's very very difficult let's just uh, you know start from that baseline then that it is then the only things you can enjoy is company family your friends if you don't have a good job if you don't have a talent then you have to focus your energy on enjoying wherever you are so there is this movie <coughs> netflix series panchayat right where this this hero he is in this village and every, his friends in startups and mncs are enjoying new year drinking boozing so the sarpanch came and put a mat on the floor of the this thing on the outside you know outside in the open and then they drank and they you know uh, sang and this thing so tomorrow morning or 50 years down the line both will say i had a good new year in 2000 20 right both will say the same thing who how does it matter so i think that's a very important philosophy anybody 
who will take this and absorb it today i think my interview with you is a success that you have to choose what is possible yeah travel is a good question for example travel or buying things i had a friend whose only interest was dressing well trust me he used to not spend 1 rupee on eating outside and he always looked so fashionable lee calvin klein back in 2007 <clears throat> always wearing good sneakers always wearing you know clean and he used to spend time cleaning them i never clean my sneakers if you look at him he will take out the full you know mm. shoe string and then wash it and then uh, <laughs> so mm, so his focus was different so if i choose to do that then i have to choose uh, I, as i said focus things. in the beginning itself so so you essentially um, are saying uh, like prioritization of what you really want so focus on true, a skill true, true. that you want to build which will pay for your life but other things you have to prioritize whether a marriage goes first or travel goes first or clothing goes mm. first and then you can do so I, as you're saying yes to something you have to say no to something else you cannot have it all i mean that i guess uh, because in in today's world when we look at all of these um, uh, influencer life we try to think that they have a perfect life of having everything they have the money but you know really don't know them personally and you're just seeing a one part of their life whether they traveling oh, oh. part of their life or money or whatever i'll tell you one thing so 2005 workout was there no it was very famous one of our um, friends dada uh, dada bodhi had uh, you know they both worked for tcs they got a chance to do a on site in europe in switzerland so what happened is they put a photo in the ice just like in ddlj you know uh, shahrukh khan and mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, kajol had a scene in the i you know cold snow without jackets um they had other equipment like heating equipment around that they didn't tell now they took a photo and they, my friends bodhi that is sister in law she when i met them i said yeah, that photo is so nice you like she it came up nice i was sick for a month after that and i have never ever and i had to travel through that and uh, it looks good to you the amount of challenges that <laughs> i had to mm-hmm. face <laughs> only i know and uh, yeah despite that i will say done once done good um, never again uh, so so sometimes we don't see the other side of the story there, there is there is a very uh, concrete example i wanted to tell is um, we are looking at a person always from the set of pictures so recently a friend of mine i met him at a birthday party so he had a divorce and he was telling me Uh, that um, he introduced me to some other lady that i don't know and i was like oh what uh, happened because all his photos on instagram and facebook were like okay the couple traveling to hawaii couple traveling to new york couple traveling to imagine everybody thinks this is the best couple in the world right <laughs> and you meet them later on and then he starts telling the realities it was horrible it was just horrible so the, it it is it is something that we have to accept and learn to uh, learn to organize our thoughts what we see is not clear another is one of my uh, nephews um, shomrat i think um, his nickname is he uh, he showed me a photo of his friends going to bali you know and enjoying life lot of instagram photos and it seems his friends they save money every year and then go to work. nowadays with air asia flights and all are so cheap your flight to goa is costlier <laughs> than your flight to singapore so in india itself travel like spending a good time in kerala is costlier than spending good time in malaysia or thailand so nowadays people are traveling out so my friend said yeah this is the case i said immediately go and travel to bali the same place where this photo came it seems the filters and photoshop edits and everything <laughs> makes that place look super good once he went there is like oh what's different this is almost like uh, some place in uh, this thing uh, he has been to sanchi and all he said it looks like sanchi 
uh, in uh, this thing uh, in India. So I was like, yes, this is what you have to understand. This is very, very, very important. Got it. Yeah. That uh, yeah. So the, these are three examples. One was the divorce case. The other was the Bali yeah. case. The other was this Switzerland cold uh, ice case. So this tells you a lot of things that. <laughs> we just see what you see and... is not uh, yeah what you see is not yeah. always real and then many a times maybe if they're real also they have worked on it i mean um, most of us i feel at a younger age want to get to the goal so maybe i wanted to talk to you about like few of this framework so um what do you think um, as you have reached a lot of your goals in life do you think that you have stopped there like let's say you wanted to come to the us let's i'm just i'm just making it up so you think goal is more important or the process of getting it or process of evolving yourself? Because a lot of, I think a lot of people want to get to the goal. Like, oh, I just want to achieve that and get done with. How is your experience achieving things that you saw, thought were almost impossible to achieve and getting that? What was your feeling and then how did you process going forward? Um, yeah, so yeah, uh, this is again a question very close to my heart what um, thank you for raising this question so if you're in microsoft or amazon or facebook you constantly forget about the peer pressure you get from your cousins and nephews and friends or instagram or facebook you go to a dinner and this other person has already cracked a six hundred thousand dollar package a year seven hundred thousand dollar package a year and already planning that when the cliff happens they will move to what what is the next this thing and all of these targets are monetary all of this when I was in Microsoft, going to principal, this team, this team mein chala ja, is team mein na, jaldi jaldi promo hota hai. Bohut log chhodke chale gaye, to wo log talent ko attract karne ke liye, tere ko seniors, upper senior band pe dalenge, but they'll put you in a very senior band, senior of the senior, so that you can easily become principal. And there's a lot of void, all the principals have left, because Microsoft principals are in demand. So, and I have, Literally, I have two, three friends whose only job is to every two, three months, kya kar raha hai be? Uh, Microsoft mein pada hua hai. Bahar dek, tera ye dosti ye kar gaya, wo kar gaya, mm-hmm. so kar gaya. He became a vice president. Um, I, as I said, my early days in job was so revealing because I had only senior people. As I grew, they became senior as well. I know of a very close friend of mine who literally said that he had a choice whether to keep his marriage or become a vice president of a company he became a vice president he thought his family will be impressed or he'll be able to provide more for his family when he becomes a vice president and today he hates to go back home opening the door alone entering a room you know preparing food and going to sleep without having a kid to talk to yeah meets his kids once in seven days six days but remaining five days are those college days ki, uh, okay after college or new job I can spend three days in office no need for sleep no need to talk with anybody that doesn't work in your 40s by that time you're technically at a different level you easily can do your tasks that time you need your spiritual and you know all those other requirements come into picture for many people those comes very early for me for example first 10 years of my job I was robotic I did not think I needed, uh, you know, means for me, let me tell you, the most interesting drive is the boring drive. You know why? Because I am with my family sitting in that car. This is the closest with, you know, three are together and continuously, you know, fighting, arguing or whatever. The boring drives, bad weather. Yesterday we went to this Seattle premium outlet. It's a one hour drive, raining. But for me, that is. I would not do that alone ever. I would rather have my family. Family is with whom you do your boring things together. And friends are with whom you do your interesting things together. There's a big difference. Because if you can survive boring, then you that, that family is very strong. Because they can survive the boring. <laughs> that is the most important phase of your uh, understanding of family life. I mean, that is my my way of thinking. Many of think yeah, this is a, so so what you're saying is like in each phase of your life you have prioritized things and as you, as we have talked like each time you say yes to something as a priority higher priority something goes becomes a lower priority. So to your exam that example someone prioritized getting that uh, VP level making that uh, you know six hundred US dollar million dollar and then 
deprioritize having a family again they have may have their own uh, way to d- decide but i think as someone who is listening to us would be thinking um that if they have to make a decision money promotion family time going abroad long term growth and all of that that all of these are uh, i said vectors or axes through which you have to sort of thing so so moving on to a, a similar topic on this is now that you have learned of gone through you went from a small place came out learned a lot of things in microsoft saw a lot of things in the in us what would you think are sort of the cheat codes as you said remember yeah. you said there were few people that were talking to someone in houston who was in nasa they were giving them some idea so if you were to look at uh, in your life where, what do you think are some cheat code that maybe normally we don't school uh, doesn't teach uh, normally people don't talk uh, but these are codes that you have seen uh, people do whether it's their life spirituality money any aspect cheat codes that you may feel are really cheat codes that uh, people really don't talk about maybe you can think about it yeah. Yeah and thanks for sending me a kind of questions you will ask and the only question i thought about was the cheat code one <laughs> because i okay. i do follow i have a few cheat codes uh, for sure and uh, these i have acquired over time um so uh, like the framework. first cheat code of yeah yeah. yeah 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 framework so for first cheat code is trying to find time to talk to somebody very senior somehow you should have in your network somebody they guide you a lot even if you're planning of a startup they will tell you that this is not the right time or this is the right time because everything has its timing you can't grow you can't grow mangoes in certain temperatures or some certain weather or you can't grow wine in some so the everything has a timing uh, even for software like you could be just have had two kid, kid kids and then you you know you had to and now you are planning a startup i am sure a lot of people overcome it trust me they they break something in the process it's like a rope that got broken once and um you know i have a friend who wanted to do iron man and literally his wife was frustrated at the end that he's only focused on this none of the weekends he will you know he will go out for there are some basic shopping sometimes even if she can drive they want to go together out right so th- some time is required so so finding a senior person who will continuously guide you is very important second framework is sleep no matter what happens there are a few hacks here one is uh, between uh, between 11 and 1 they say is your essential sleep that allows you to feel refreshed next day if you sleep late then there is a possibility either you have slept late for so many years now that you have moved that 11 o'clock to 1 o'clock to now 1 to 3 or 2 to 4 in the morning so you will have to be consistent if you are consistently sleeping at 1 o'clock in the night then you have to consistently sleep at 1 o'clock in the night because it's scientific that every day if you wake up at 8 your brain now has figured out at 8 o'clock he needs to be productive which means at 8 o'clock he needs to um, now you know wake up and be whereas today if you grow at 7 wake up at 7 then your brain needs to reconfigure itself and uh, these are very important things so sleep is very important sleep means having a good mattress clean bed if even small articles on your bed your sleep might get impacted you might wake up for a few seconds or it irritates you then with age comes your snoring issues and things like that you sh- i i had sleep apnea i went through cpap i um, i started swimming and um, saunas in the evening to just to overcome that sleep challenges yeah so second definitely sleep third is um, the food habits of course are some hacks for example one, i try to do one meal a day it's omad it's called omad style um no. i skip the breakfast and i started skipping breakfast once i read that breakfast is the best meal of the day is a advertising slogan to sell more cereal products in us and they kind of put it in our minds that you know um same with meat some people say meat can damage your body it is only to basically market this other non meat based plant based protein industry because they can sell it at a premium price so 
uh, and meat is es actually essential um, you know chicken is essential for bodybuilding and your testosterone and uh, all the mood enhancing uh, the um, uh, chemicals from your uh, brain point of view so that's the third uh, important thing that you know framework food sleep having a mentor and having a mentor is it is basically uncompromisable vivekanand the person like vivekanand wanted a mentor can you imagine that he kind of felt that hunger the need to have a mentor so a man of that caliber fourth i i will say of course fitness so some exercise that could be yoga uh, essentially i've seen the yoga uh, some of the uh, uh, yoga sons are extremely important like every time i am feeling um, very very down i do some stretching exercises and these are all basically mentioned in the yoga um the yoga sans we have and they work they literally work because mind it today we might be solving technical problems 2000 years ago when sadhus were doing yoga and finding out uh, their brain was also you know continuously trying to engineer stuff and uh, uh, uh have a thought process so um, they also had their own challenges challenges of the, of those year of those days they also had their own peer pressure they also had their own uh, fear uncertainty and doubt they also had in, uh, you know marriage issues um they also had monetary issues in uh, in those days so they also thought about and figured out this yoga sans this yoga sans are not like some random study like you know vegan food that came only in last 10 years these are like 2000 3000 year old um exercises so th th that's the fourth framework um i will say as a cheat code and the fifth one is um find out all the um ways a person can be basically positive like listening to jokes looking at memes every 10 minutes spend time elevating your mood talking with somebody who you know just is a a uh, pleasure to talk with not with somebody who will say oh the stock market has fallen oh i have lost so much in crypto <laughs> always find somebody who is positive to talk to or watch you know stand up comedy nowadays there are bengali stand up comics there are hindi english um there are so many american stand up comics i uh, i really like um so yeah the, those are the these five are the, the hacks uh, yeah so i think these are these are imp i think these are really good ones so i think you talked about food fitness sleep which are i think many people are talking about getting a mentor you said i think it's sort of shortcut to a lot of things as you, as we are talking about like a lot of times um as you talked as you came out of uh, came out and you went to college and you found some other people who were doing these shortcuts because they had it said mamas or uncles in the us or somewhere yeah i was telling that bill gates uh, bill gates entire relatives were like you know in power positions that's how she, he got contact with the ibm person to sell his product, uh, this thing idea you and i cannot reach to the ibm vp to even hear our idea right right so so then so i think that that, that brings me to another um, point in terms of as let's say as you said you you came from a smaller place your father was doing good great in business there but then as you moved you essentially moved from a smaller pond to a bigger pond to a bigger pond as, as you are now this is the one of the biggest ponds that you can be uh what would you think so for example a person starting out somewhere in bihar somewhere in tamil nadu or andhra pradesh small place his all aspiration is okay let me get through my college and get get that out but what are the things he should be thinking uh, if he doesn't have that like sometimes the mentors are not there and sometimes we feel how can can we ever get to a vp of uh, ibm if i want to start a company but how mm. let's say maybe after your experience now you have the confidence to do it how can someone has a confidence as they are growing i mean that's um, do, do you have that's... a thought about it e I I I continuously think what if what I would have done if I was 21 now and I can use this last 20 years experience if I was ever given a time machine I will go and definitely you know make a lot of changes and I have blogs that I wrote in 2005 that I wish a senior version of me can come and tell me what to do because i don't know what to do uh, there were managers there so back in 2005 everybody was doing gre and coming to us for masters yeah, i had friends from agartala also who did the same um there were friends of mine who were planning for is right you civil services there were friends friends of mine who wanted to go back and do masters in iits 
to get a better resume because IIT gate and seven of my friends went back to IITs. So that's that was like a huge peer pressure for me. Then there was uh, another set of people who wanted to go to research. So they wanted to save for three, four years, five years and then go to PhD. Uh, imagine I also had a lot of options and all of these were questionable. Uh, they, I mean, means all of these had their pluses and minuses, pros and cons. Eventually, and I also saw work. that um, they, if you are, um, as I said, focused uh, in any one of these things, you are you shouldn't drop because it takes 10,000 hours to become an expert in anything. So I started swimming two years ago and you might think what's there in swimming? So it's just maybe two, three months of hard work, you know, having a trainer and learning. The complications that are involved in swimming properly is exponential versus somebody just doing freestyle for, a, you know, 10 laps, you know, 250 meters, 500 meters, you know, one kilometer versus somebody who is a swimmer that is benefiting his health by swimming is huge the way you breathe the tech. and almost every senior swimmer so even yesterday i met somebody who is 82 years old and swims faster than me swimming is the only sport where i see the senior people excel better than actually even younger people on the weights floor and cardio floor it's only younger people some of the cardio yeah there are older people but swimming big body you know a lot of lab but still very good at swimming and they their hearts are very very good they tell me that their doctors are amazed and they all said, even swimming needs 10,000 hours. So if you're young now, this 10,000 hour business is very important. So uh, last year I started um, trying to learn violin and this 10,000 hour business is again, it's not like my 20 years of experience as a technical engineer or life and having family or success or whatever makes me capable more than you to <laughs> That's something learn violin faster, no you have to put in somewhere your 10,000 hours. Yeah, some people who are coming from a smaller town first have to basically make small, small incremental steps. Otherwise, their growth might have been linear in the same place where they were. But if they keep moving until they hit a good point where they can. So here is my story. When I joined Microsoft, I was uh, uh, not in the best of uh, teams, basically, because those teams were very agile. They had a lot of people who were very, very senior in Microsoft. They were growing. I kept switching teams until I hit SQL Server. When I hit SQL Server, I spent eight years there. So for first three years in Microsoft, first I was in Microsoft India, changed two teams, moved to US, changed five or six teams in three uh, in the two years, changed managers uh, because I was not finding the right fit. Similarly, if you are coming from a small town uh, and um, what you should specifically focus on personality building, on your health, going to the gym, looking fit. If you look fit, right, even though you might not be tall or you might not be exactly having a good shape of body, if you are fit and healthy, your skin, you know, basically looks different. These have effect on the other side, the person on the other side. So uh, and um, you get things done a little bit easier because some at one point somebody might make an assumption. Oh, this guy must have um, is not coming from a background where he can be a vice president someday versus your you know your health your fitness they look different people can start at least correlating that this look at tata chairman now right he looks from a basic background but he groomed himself so grooming is very important and uh, putting 10000 hours in some field reaching to a point where you want to dedicate those 10000 hours um, it could be any field engineering medicine 10000 hours is a rule that you should follow like your religion this should be your personal thought process. How does 10,000 hours come? Let me tell you. If you put six hours every day, in a month you spend 22 to 25 uh, you know, days putting in six hours on that thing. Six hours focused, not like calling people, watching Facebook, no. Six hours solid. So six into 20 is what, 120? So per month you were hitting around 120 to 150 hours. So in 12 months you were what? hitting around um, 15, 1600 hours, 15, yeah. uh, in, in around six, seven years, six, you hit the 10,000 hours. Yeah, because I'll tell you the story of Novak Djokovic. Novak Djokovic had, a, so you know this serve success rate, right? Like serve uh, this thing. When you serve, uh, 
how many of those you end up with a point. So he had 49.2% success rate. And he was playing, I think, locally in Serbia at that point in time. When he this 49.2 became 49.5, he, I think, entered the national rankings. When it become 50.1, he was already in top 100 in, you know, ATP. And it became 50.3 when he became a world's And each of these point two was because you would have learned basic tennis. But right. then when these interesting parts start, you need those 4,000, 5,000 hours. Same happened with Michael Phelps. Because if you see one reporter said, oh, you are a giant, you know, you are six feet six, your upper body is made for swimming. His body is like a fish, right? Yeah, um, yeah. yeah he's, he's extremely V-shaped and uh, flat and um, the, uh, he's very streamlined for swimming. He said, I swim eight hours a day, eat 10,000 calories a day and burn it all. And still, I don't have any cholesterol. He has zero cortisol. So imagine telling him that he's lucky. That's stupid, right? So <laughs> so you have to put in those 10,000 hours and you have to groom yourself. Grooming me. See, I was a good student, right? I was not groomed. When I came to US, one thing happened to me was, why should somebody who is, you know, good at studies uh, give up on the idea of not grooming themselves? So I did so many thousand things that I can't even, some of them I can't even tell, but I essentially, yeah, no, not steroids or anything, but um, I continuously kept innovating the fitness thing and how to look better, how to do mouth exercises, how to do, because I, I still cannot hit a, let's say model, but a, you can still groom yourself from point A to point B and you need to do that. You're dressing, the kind of clothes you wear, um, be very selective, think about, why does Vivekananda think about clothing? Why? Why does Swami Vivekananda think about clothing? Why did Mahatma Gandhi think about that khadi dress? There are a lot of other ways to wear khadi, right? Why he thought of that? So you have to put in this thinking process. How you brand. impress the person on the other side? Yeah. Why Pranab Mukherjee is to wear only that kind of you know safari suit? Why Abdul Kalam had that kind of hair? Because Exciting. that's today. If somebody puts a small silhouette of Abdul Kalam, you say, "Oh, that is Abdul Kalam. Oh, that is Mahatma Gandhi." Right? They differentiated themselves, even though they were very technically good. They did not give up on their looks and grooming. It's super important, and you will realize it as time comes. Better realize it early. Not to be like an Instagram model to capture more eyes. Maybe that's also good. You make a base of 1 million people and now decide to write a book. All of a sudden you have a base, right? So they also right. have a usage. But uh, I will say personal grooming is very, very important. Why Netaji Shubhash Chandra Bose did not have a single wrinkle on his cloth when he was studying in UK? There must be a reason, right? This stellar intellectual people. Why Mah uh, Ravindranath looked a certain way? Why did he dress so elegantly? You, you you really have to put in thought why Lata Mangeshkar wears that sari in that quintessentially you know similar way. That's part of her identity. Your brand. So I Your think brand. what you're saying is like mm. so so let's say let's say someone is growing up, they are very good technically or not, does you know there is engineering, marketing, whatever. You are part of a bigger group. Then as you move up, I mean you have to consistently move up. You have to differentiate. One of the biggest important that you're talking about is grooming yourself or, or making yourself sort of a different from others so that you have a unique styling. And then one of the other things that you talked about was a lot of these things don't show up just now. So it's like this curve where you are investing a lot, but out, output is still not there. But at some point, when the output starts coming out of that effort, it becomes exponentially higher. The 10,000 exactly, hours rule exactly. So till exactly. let's say maybe 5,000 hours, you are almost like the same other guy who is doing the same thing. But as you are doing it, and as you are going to 10,000 and beyond, that has that exponential curve, which takes you out of all, let's say, thousands of people at the bottom. And you're just... And that is the only shortcut. The rocket. That hard work is the only shortcut. <laughs> there is no okay. other shortcut to the whole process. So I, I know we are going above the time, so yeah, I'll take yeah, maybe yeah. 10 minutes. Are you okay? Yeah, yeah. Let's let's just finish okay. it off. Yeah. So, uh, okay. A few things I wanted to know that you know, all of this is great. So as we move, as, as you talked about um, all of your background, I wanted to get your view on the future. So around 
uh, you, you are you are in a technical field and you see a lot of these things happening especially in tech um what would you think um especially like when i'm i'm putting uh, let's put on a hat of um, of an from india perspective um mm. what would a country like india and and the youth that are growing up what would they be focused on as they are going in school colleges we talked about grooming being one part important part of creating their brand by itself but um mm. as you see a lot of ai stuff coming in and all of that what will be a skill set that you think people should be evolving whether it is math or it should be philosophy or persuasion skills do you have any view on that okay okay um first of all i'm very jealous of people who are growing up now in india the i'm i'm super jealous let me tell you a few things uh, i closely follow whatever is happening in india from an outsider's view i have now stayed here for 11 years and um i spent 28 29 years of my first beginning life in india and i did not want to stay in us it was my daughter's you know cancer episode where i realized that the health system in india is not yet there otherwise i would have gone back because remaining things don't matter to me i could earn money travel to us once in a year see the same rather he- sitting here i don't have time to <laughs> go to niagara uh-huh. had i been in india i would have <laughs> essentially taken time out and seen the world so uh, so i i stayed back for the health reasons but i am a like a devoted uh, this thing indian at heart and i follow things so a few things let me tell you we'll come to philosophy and what you can learn and what to look at let me tell you the shortcomings you know the india's jet engine project started in 1970s it's called the kaveri engine project it's not yet done and if you have to build a plane of your own a ballistic ballistic missile of your own if you have to build a rocket spaceship of your own that means and nobody is going to give you that technology they will say okay i'm going to manufacture and sell it to you or i'm going to have my own plants with total ip protection do that india doesn't have its own chip making india doesn't have so listen listen to this interesting thing when ola tried to sell this ola scooties why did they started getting on fire because this lithium ion batteries were researched for whether in us and in colder climate countries india's temperature it was not yet tested but we put in this lithium ion batteries thinking that oh we'll have this um, you know uh, batteries of our own now they are talking about this aluminum based and a few other um, uh, different kinds of so research <coughs> back in 2000s you should have tried to be an engineer to get into a service company if you're not that very talented uh, or early in your life you realize that okay i'm not going to be a scientist but in the 2000 to 2020 period india was building products of its own flipkart came in ola came in zomato swiggy and this bharat pay and this upi uh, so many stacks got developed right and um, there is this grocery apps now there are this um, hyper trading you know wholesale retail uh, shopping uh, this thing uh, solutions now exist organic farming so lot of technical uh, not organic but technically technically enhanced organic farm, farming so lot of innovation happened in the 20s to, to, to 2010 2010 to 2020 2010 to 2030 should be the year of researchers phd researchers because a lot of this technology is now for example when china is just going to become number one us stopped the chips advanced chips to china imagine you are racing and somebody just takes your shoes out and <laughs> starts pulling you back uh, when you are at the end line so if you are a kid now find all these problems that are india centric and try to solve them you immediately have a market of 130 crores 140 crores people and that's a market that nobody has access to right china doesn't allow access to its huge market to other companies iphone yeah. tesla are like um, limitations because they are so good that they had to but for most other products they they have indigenized it so today you have to find those problems like i said battery technology solar technology renewable sustainable growth like even the code you write today there are software that tells you that this code if you run it in a python environment will have more carbon footprint then this code if you write it in another environment so there is a software cost to everything like bitcoin mining why is bitcoin becoming less popular because it's not a green solution it's highly energy intensive like 2 terabyte uh, It's not tera by 2 tera watt hours of energy is wasted just on bitcoin mining and there are other proof of work this thing coins out there so 
I will say, uh, and even finance, India, India has not even scratched the surface on the amount of credit it can give. Right. Businesses run on credit. India is not like if my sister is running a startup for three years now, she cannot get credit <laughs> even now. So, yeah. Imagine there is no scientific process or not scientific. Forget about it. She has a website that is working. There are people with reviews, but we cannot take this to a bank and get credit. Yeah. Because the banks don't have a way to validate that this person actually has run a business for three years and uh, wants money and given the money, they have a plan because they have already built their website. They have put in their own hard-earned blood and sweat and uh, they are not going to let it go. But banks don't have it. Rather, one guy who has a loophole and he is able to convince one bank employee or is a relative of the bank employee, he now gets 10 loans. That's So India, innovation is just waiting to happen. And innovation can happen in so many fields, like drones, swarms, defense. India's defense needs so much. Uh, I know of a startup because I was, uh, my brother has a startup, cousin brother, and I was part of this cohort of people who are looking at investments. Um, it's like a incubator that uh, that uh, interacts with investors and these startups, and then get them together and get you know funding. Um, I met three different teams that are working on uh, you know defense small startups one of them is basically a gun with face uh, recognition on it so that when an army soldier is carrying a gun in a smoky environment he's still able to recognize the faces this is not you know infrared i'm talking about face recognition just like face facebook does right. on the gun itself they, they, and they were trying to do that another guy was trying to essentially looks like some some of these advanced guns have a recoil time trying to reduce the recoil time by uh, they were they were studying physics and basically making a change so india it's just going to blast because there are so many requirements First of all, everything that has worked out in US, like you know, EV, uh, all these innovations happened in US first, right? They then applied in any other country, like Uber happened here, so Ola happened in India, Amazon happened here, Flipkart happened in India, right? Walmart happened here, so Big Bazaar happened in India. So same with who wants to be a millionaire became Konbanega Karodpati. You know, Big Boss happened here, success, and Big Boss happened in India. Um, all these things basically. So we are you saying we are know. saying that a lot of lot of these things in India that we have seen is lot of things have been copied from the West. And and as we are in the West, and as you are mm. looking at it, you are saying there are indigenous. Uh, so the, I would say India has these specific problems that Indian youth should solve for. And I think very, uh, and if you look at US as we, we have seen in the startup as well, the only may, only way to make more money is to solve a complex problem. So Elon Musk is solving a battery problem. That's why he became mm. the richest guy. It's not that he has worked in some company and he has made mm. uh, you know, corp, uh, you know promotion and, and he became the richest guy. It's not like that. So if you are, mm. what you're saying is, if you're a youth, you should look at skill set that you build which allows you to solve a problem, which I think many times yeah. I would like to ask you a question around this is like as we as you grew up in India and I grew up in India in school systems also, we don't encourage uh, problem solving. We are always answering a question. Someone is framing the question and you're answering the question. So what you are now saying is that they need to frame the question also. Like what problem should I solve for and then have the technicality to solve it. Are, are, are you talking about like how we should, yeah uh, even in the us if you see, yeah even in us many of these innovators actually started in their homes so there was this guy he built a he was just 13 years or 14 years old he built a nuclear reactor inside his house at the age of 13 using not it's use it's basically a very low powered you know low enriched uranium kind of a reactor that's you know legally allowed then there was this one uh, biological startup. They brought this uh, gene editing tool and studied it home. So even here, the education system might be there, but slowly, you know, uh, it's racist to say, but we Indians have kind of made this thing again that most of our second generation American Indians are uh, only looking at getting into Harvard and getting the grades and getting validation. Right. Whereas right. there are um, people so confident about that that hey, I can go to Stanford anytime. You know, like <laughs> Bill Gates was a Harvard dropout and then uh, this Sergey Brin and uh, Larry Page were uh, Stanford dropouts because they don't care. They were doing something on the side. Larry Page and Sergey Brin were essentially having all the data of Stanford University stored on their this thing, hard disk, right? And that's how they uh, started building a uh, search engine and then things like that. 
So who is stopping you from doing that? Because our school systems are a drag. You have to not become a topper. You have to basically become a topper in life, not in school. That is the whole fundamental logic behind it. Schools give you holistic all-round growth and that's why Indians are, you know, uh, Indians, successful Indians and educated Indians know so many things about so many things. But <laughs> that need not be the case. You can choose to stop learning math if you think you are very good at, you know, music um, and just get the bare passing marks or don't even care about those results. Agartala is Boishampayan, right? He did not complete his college. Today he's a, he has a startup in San Francisco. He has houses all across the world, maybe. <laughs> That's what I heard. So, <laughs> and India is changing because parents are... Parents actually really never bothered, truly speaking, because they did not know. They thought education was the only way to come out of a mess that India was in the 70s and 80s, right? Red tape, complete license raj, applying for a phone takes 10 years to give you a phone. Scooter, Bajaj, Chetak had a waiting period of four or five years in Kolkata at some point in time. So for them, getting a government job, being secure was one thing. Today, they don't care. And even then, they would not have cared. We always think our parents are so, you know, old school. No, if you look at their youth, they were as as banal, as, you know, childish, as, uh, you know, ruthless and aggressive as you are today. So, so ignore, uh, if you do not put in good marks, many, many parents don't care. It's a very few parents who make it life difficult. So you have to, but you have to be good at something. And parents are also saying the same thing. Even when I was growing up in Agartala, you know, people in Shilchar, Udaipur, Teliamura, their parents were saying the same thing. Kisu ekta to bhalo kor, baba, amar kichu lagena. Right? That's, I have heard it. Like, do good in some one field, I don't care. Because they also don't want you to be, you now become a professor and uh, things like They just want you to succeed, have a good life, have kids. And because they are looking from that mature perspective. Our parents are very big guides that whom we keep ignoring because of too much. It's called familiarity, this thing, right? You, <laughs> um, because that person is too familiar or you have been told too many times that, uh, you know, early to bed, early to rise, that you'd ignore it. So similarly, our parents are <laughs> sometimes gold of information and knowledge but we ignore them right yeah we ignore them yeah yeah i think these are these are good so we'll do uh we'll, we'll try to wrap it up so we'll do some quick fire with you in terms of um any any other thing that you wanted to talk about uh before we go through quick fire something that you feel uh, that you no, i had a lot of ideas yeah um, uh, like business ideas i no, for for people now, youngsters, I... Oh, okay, okay. Uh, so we'll, 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 yeah, get, yeah. we'll get to that. So let me, let's do the quick fire and I'll get to that mm. uh, advice. Set. So, mm. because again, a lot of people uh, will listen to you and will like to know, okay, what are the things that you do? Mm. Yeah. We'll mm. do like a sort of basic stuff. Um, things such as any book that you feel, uh, whether you're reading now or in the past, is has, has an impact on your uh, life. That's um, books generally if you read too many of them right, it's very difficult and then there are uh, there are conflicting ideas uh, let mm. me tell you upfront because it worked for that person might not work for you for example you'll always hear ki burning the midnight oil or you know this person oh Isha Chandra Vidyashagar you know, studied in night right, lamp right, right. you know street lights studied till night 2 o'clock or he studied. on the other hand you will see another book telling you early to bed, early to rise, mm. makes a man healthy, wealthy and wise. So there are this conflicting proverbs. Uh, yes. So that's why books have actually confused me more oh. than, and I'm telling this upfront that, yeah, I, I have actually been confused more. And life lessons are more important. How do you get life lessons? Meeting people, talking with people. When Abhishek Dha gave me this opportunity, I knew that I can talk with you. And maybe if the channel becomes successful, I'll have the opportunity to talk with more people. And I'm not backing out of it because you learn so much from life experiences. And most of the things I told you are from another person's life experience, right? Like family mm. important, not vice president role, um, go, traveling uh, by cutting down on other priorities and only putting money on traveling. You can travel. So so all these things, having kids early or through other people's, uh, you know, experiences. In, uh, this thing, yeah. So books, I will say, I will never suggest any anybody that okay. one single book which can become okay. your guidance which yeah. is okay which is okay so movies mm. uh, something that you grew up with something that had impact or liked no. i mean it need not be impact also something that you like like maybe Amit yeah, Khan, mo movies Khan. songs and books kind of you know come uh, you know this thing uh, go round and round so i'll tell you about one movie uh, that mm. the only movie that kind of had a 
impacted my life it's called pontiac moon it nobody knows about this movie it's uh, it's a different genre of movie these are called road trip movies a, I, I think the family lost their mother so the father and son decided to take a you know trip driving all across us and uh, they had a 1960 pontiac and pontiac moon is because they put in 365000 miles or something on that car which is the distance between earth and moon oh and in in this entire movie it's about father and dad talking about life and goals and things like that but what stood out uh, to me is i have read that most many many people who are very confident and successful in life have traveled like a wanderer swami vivekananda did right traveled all across rabindranath used to travel and his ideas you might think today that oh his ideas were so good but he was also traveling continuously and enhancing his uh, you know his senses so, similarly these people they could not travel abroad so they the father and son traveled within us and this pontiac moon i was very small i uh, i i actually cannot find that movie now anymore i might be able to in netflix i have not looked at it but that was kind of in my childhood i i used to almost every night think about this that how why did they do that how they were running out of money they were working odd jobs in different cities and getting you know money for the next leg of the journey how does one live like that we are only told to save money but they also ended having a good life right father son you know they were able to get over their mother's loss so so that means that's also another way of life we are only told about one way of life Always sit together life. have you know mm-hmm. uh, grow your kids uh, grow old yeah. um, save money and buy a house all those boring concepts but boring this book, movie yeah. was i was very very small and all my thought processes were shattered by this movie because by that time i was only watching all what terminator <laughs> apocalypse yeah. now uh, true lies these were the movies i used to look up to but this movie randomly one day oh i remember why i had uh, chicken pox so i was just sleeping <laughs> and this was the only thing running on mm. uh, i think star star movies at that time and uh, star movies used to be only hollywood movies at that time now it has become a india channel so um, yeah so um, i will say that that's movies. one movie people should watch it in it, it Yes, yeah. has, has an extra, yeah. And then uh, I'll I'll skip the learning part. You talked about you talked about uh, you are learning something um, as a musical instrument. But people you follow essentially on social media uh, for your like as you are improving yourself, people you follow. I, people podcast anything. I, yeah. So everybody follows Elon Musk. He is bringing in a wrong name for himself, but people who understand. his way of uh, you know even if i have 1 per- 0.1% of the way of his thought process i know what he is doing has everything is thought upon it's not a random decision whether he likes to talk about doge coins and why he does it is you know you and i will not understand i've seen him in repeated interviews where he has basically responded in the most technical way so this is one guy whom i follow but he he might not be an example for everybody there is a reason if everybody was tendulkar in the stadium then there is no fun right so uh, he is something to someone to follow the second i nowadays have started to follow policy makers people who change policies uh, because they are thinking at a very uber level they are not thinking about oh let's do this and this will make us uh, you know rich for two years uh, or let us do this uh, uh, small change and then all of a sudden we'll have good healthcare uh, uh, in this town no there are policy makers who are basically like external affairs minister s jay shankar i follow him very closely every time i look at i i hear his speech i, I get something to learn um there is somebody called steve jarvetson he was um, the um he was one of the initial investors in most silicon valley successful stories uh, if you go and read his uh, life you will realize he's uh, he's a every david uh, star trek star wars fan his room is full of that but he also became so rich by his investments in the right places why because he thought differently he had he was a quintessential nerd but he was able to convert that weakness so called weakness into a strength 
so steve jarvetson is one more person i follow and then there are famous youtubers um like john harris i think is his name i i i i watch his videos and uh, follow uh, how deep research he does um, single handedly and these are not they this is not like bbc or dw or al jazeera with so much money to basically uh, create a story yes, but uh, yeah these guys are you you sh these are they are all inspirational truly speaking okay so these are these are good ones so we'll try to wrap it up in terms of as as we have talked about your starting from a small place coming out seeing these gaps in your skills always changing as 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 you and I are all immigrants into this new country we you know we all have succeeded in a way because we have always learned changed learned changed you know you, you go through that um and over the years you have picked up some cheat codes some frameworks which has helped you to get better and better and mentorship is one of the things that you talked about uh we talked about importance of you know personal grooming creating a brand for yourself we talked about all of that so now i know you talked about like okay if you if you were to go 20 years back in your life you would have made a lot of changes right so let's open this out for you now to say okay if a, a new person is listening to you today uh Whether it's from Agartala or West Bengal or wherever, a guy who has made all the way, been an engineer, um, working at Microsoft in Seattle, and all the things that you have done in between. I don't think just job defines you, but you have you have as a person evolved. You have a family. Um, you you are now settled in the U.S. So if you were to rewind it back and mm -hmm. start, let's think about it, and then you tell me what what advice would you have. yeah if i were to rewind it uh, i i will say in um, college i had lot of fun rather than studies um, which is something i will not that's the only part i'll not change um, that's because um, it it is supposed to be that only that's the sole purpose of college because we didn't learn much in college and uh, everything was on the job uh, and one of our professors said, not professors teachers who later on joined uh, some other company um, she had told that you know anyways in college whatever you learn you're never going to get a one on one job ever so you you basically should know the theoretical basics and fundamentals of the subject like computer networking what are the you know major terms or you know software engineering what are the major processes uh, but not go deep into any one of them because you don't know what is going to come because you're not you cannot consume all this knowledge you have to pick one like in even in those days she used to talk about either choose you know networking or compilers or uh, a certain engineering aspect and focus on that so everywhere i have met successful people and serious people they have always said choose one and focus so college i had a lot of fun i should have focused on one single subject and continued then by my 30th year itself i would have a lot of ideas in that field deep core ideas i would have made um, because when i joined microsoft i remember a guy who used to come in our bus and he had rejected microsoft too many three many times because he did not get the particular project he wanted and i was laughing at him you left a microsoft opportunity but imagine he was thinking from my perspective now that had i not done this 20 other things and focused on one by my um this other things you can always read blogs and read medium or you know so many technical news channels are there even in 2004 5 6 7 8 there were so many technical news channels uh, if you go and see most of these websites were already famous by 2000 right most of these successful websites so like techcrunch was there already so many years ago so i feel that you know i would have chosen one thing become an expert by my 30s got an idea created a startup of my own uh because if i would have gotten 10 years experience in one single you know area i know there are a lot of mainframe developers who are doing it for 20 years but they're writing scripts i'm talking about the guy who designs the compilers and the os in the mainframe i'm talking about that layer not the layer that is a consumer that's just a user uh your uh, th these users can become consultants at max but the developers who are on the behind the screens they can build the next mainframe v2 mainframe v3s and they did something right that's why mainframes are still in existence in 2023 now that we are talking about so uh, i i i i will say choosing one thing if i was in 20s i would have quickly identified one thing now it should not be something which is a fad it should be something solid like 
like engineering when we started they said oh civil and electrical and uh, you know engineering are the mechanical are the real greenfield engineer uh, green green engineering streams they will always be there but computer science might not be there in you know 20 years now computer science has actually elevated its respect because it is making ground changing technical advancements medical health everything is through software simulation and processes and things like that even your nuclear reactors are first simulated in the in a supercomputer and then weather conditions and you know farming agriculture so computer science has basically earned its respect as a top engineering field but it has become too big ai itself is like a 30 year journey your um, networking stack itself is a 20 25 year journey databases are itself 30 40 50 i know of people working in databases in 70s 50 years and still learning so so essentially what I'm saying is if you start early, it's like Warren Buffett says, right? He bought his first stock at the age of 15. Now only thing he depends is he wanted to even start earlier. So don't get into that. That's why you start early, focus on one thing. Um, if you're from Bihar, you know, remote Bihar, then of course you have to first take incremental steps to reach a somewhat, you know, uh, a somewhat level from which you can basically put in the 10,000 hours. Because you, t till you reach this level, you don't even know what are the good things and mentors will help you yeah that's it yeah this is uh, yeah this is really important i think what you're saying is <laughs> focusing on one thing and if you can get in a bit early and then there are a lot of different things you can do with it so i think that's a very good suggestion so as we wrap up um well we'll put things on on the screen in terms of your background and stuff like that but anywhere if you want people to reach out to you and people may uh, what happens with LinkedIn. them when you put out the internet you don't know but uh, where should they so reach LinkedIn, out to you? LinkedIn I have seen uh, LinkedIn I usually get a lot of requests because of course uh, you know now my profile looks good so a lot of people reach out to me uh, LinkedIn is I, I do respond there are a lot of inter okay. engineers who are just interested about life whatever questions you ask they have the same questions and I can point them okay. to this YouTube video uh, yeah yeah okay so that that wraps up this one thanks so much for watching the video I hope you found this video interesting please leave a comment if you have any questions or thoughts